Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to go back in time, back to the time of the Penn Surfmaster 250. Now this reel is an interesting reel. I picked it up at a tag sale last past weekend. The owner said that it's been uh, in the garage now for quite a few years. It used to be his dad's, and when I bought it, it actually had some old line on it, and I went ahead and removed that line before uh, before filming this video. But uh, this is a combination reel. It's a reel that shares the case with the, uh, the pen jig master it shares the gearing which is a uh, lower gearing it's not high speed with the long beach line it shares a handle with the uh, the surf master line but uh, also the uh, uh, beach master the 155 handle uh, it's smaller than the long beach or the um, the jig master handle as you can see here uh, and it was designed for uh, uh, simplicity of use. It has the single uh, take apart screw and uh, it's uh, been a very durable reel. Kind of got uh, um, obsoleted with the Jigmaster which has the higher gearing and uh, as a result uh, this reel was discontinued. So we're going to take this apart. I'll show you what's inside of it. We'll show you how to service this and put it back out uh, fishing once again. So to do that you remove the, uh, the one screw from the take apart and just a, a brief kind of turn backwards to remove the side plate. It's a beautiful condition, but it's very dry as a reel. And uh, we'll go ahead and um, uh, do some work on this. So the first thing I do on the case here is to lubricate it. I use a blue grease, uh, in this case a pen reel grease. Uh, there's other manufacturers that are out there. I just happen to buy a tub of that. And we're going to go ahead and put some uh, lubrication on the uh, the back uh, bearing side plate uh, for where the spool uh, is seated. I'm just going to put that spool in from now. Now, as I mentioned, this case does share uh, components with the Jigmaster, and uh, one of the things I'm going to do afterwards, I have a couple of side plates that are the solid uh, crossbars as opposed to the standalone crossbars from a, uh, a Jigmaster that. Um, uh, had broken and I'm going to go back after this video is over I'm going to replace these because they fit uh, uh, the identical screw patterns and also these prevent the, the real twist uh, it's easier to see this reel get out of alignment with the single bar so I'll go ahead and do that later uh, but I just wanted to make you aware if you have a Surfmaster you can do that conversion on this side then we're going to go ahead and take the gearing apart and this reel is very dry. When I tested it, it did work, but it, uh, it, it was very dry. And the reason for the reel being so dry is that uh, it had sat for quite a bit of time and all of the lubrication in this reel uh, essentially just uh, uh, quit. It uh, dried up. So we remove that set screw, then we remove the handle nut. And uh, one of the upgrades you can do on that as well is you could replace that handle with the bigger handle from the Long Beach 65 where the Jig Master, either one of them, would work. And we're going to reverse this out. Take out the ferrule, which uh, is on the, uh, the post or the pinion gear sleeve. And uh, then we can go back and we can take this uh, gear side plate out. Now this reel is very clean inside so it doesn't look like it's uh, been worked too much. We're going to take the drag assembly off when we get to this just to make sure that uh, they're lubricated but if they need to be replaced we'll also replace them as part of this service. So we're going to go ahead and take these four screws out that hold that uh, bridge plate in position and you'll notice as I work on this that I'm doing two things. I have a protective glove on my hand uh, that's because I don't like to get a lot of the uh, dirt and grease and that from fishing reels. In this case, this one's bone dry, so there's none of that out there. But it's a good practice if you are working on reels to protect your hand. Uh, the other thing is I'm cupping my hand here because there is a spring for the anti-reverse dog that stops the reel from backpedaling. And uh, if you do this, you're actually in a better position to capture that spring when you uh, remove the bridge rather than leaving it open and have it fly out. So we're going to cup it. We're going to we've, re, we've uh, 
loosen those four screws. We're going to push this bridge through and then we can remove the side plate. In this case, this is an older style spring. It's a flat spring that's uh, used to hold the anti-reverse dog in place. And this is your anti-reverse dog. So we're going to uh, take those, set those aside. And I may have said uh, uh, Long Beach before. This, uh, this actually looks like the Beachmaster uh, gearing here. So uh, it's been a while since I've had one of these open. So we're going to do a couple of things. I'm noticing that the, the drags seem to be in good stead there. We'll take them off and service them in a minute. But I'm going to work first on the, the gear side plate. I do that by pushing down on the spool gear. I can then remove, remove the transition piece. Or somebody called it a jack the other day. I can remove the jack. Uh, that gives me the ability to remove the collar or yoke and the spool. Uh, here, and then there's two springs which hold the uh, that enable the free spooling to happen. As I mentioned, it's a very clean reel, but I do notice that there's some junk on the bottom here, so I'm going to go clean that out. And one of the tools that I keep on my bench is uh, cotton swabs. Uh, they're great for cleaning, and in this case, they'll pick up all the dirt and contaminants that is that are in that reel. Now, if you had some stubborn grease in there, and uh, as I mentioned, this stuff kind of just dried, but this is a very clean side plate. But stubborn grease, you could use a WD-40 uh, to loosen that up, and then you could use your uh, your cotton swabs off of that. Once I have that done, the, ooh, how do you like that? Uh, you can go in and you can lubricate the other side uh, bearing uh, assembly. It's not a bearing, but uh, the collar that holds the... Um, the spool on that side. We can come back then and put those two springs in. And uh, these reels are, are great reels. The only complaint that I've had with these reels is when you're deep water fishing, uh, you're really cranking away to get that, uh, that reel back up. It's just not a high speed reel. So uh, when you do that, it really does wear you out after a while. So some folks have uh, tried these for jigging. That doesn't work very well either because a, uh, an ocean jig requires a high, uh, high speed retrieve and these are just, uh, they're not geared for that. So you really have to, have to work on that. So there is a little uh, build up on this uh, yoke or, or collar and I'm just uh, scraping some of that off right now and that's just a result of the the uh, grease drying on it, uh, and if we just uh, use a, a utility knife here, for example, it's, it's one way you can probably use a screwdriver or another. But just you just want to make sure that that's nice and smooth because if it's if it's built up and you can see it polishes up nicely. Um, if it's if you got build up on it, that spool gear is not going to turn properly. And uh, it's going to uh, it's going to work down on the uh, performance. All right. So once I do that, blue grease onto the, the yoke. Here's your spool gear. I'm going to look to make sure that all of the teeth are intact. I don't expect to see anything broken there because the reel was turning. But you do want to make sure that they're all uniform, uh, that there's no bends or breaks in them, uh, and that uh, they're lubricated in the end. So we're going to go lubricate those right now. Again, using that blue grease, I'll take that uh, collar or yoke again. I'll put that in here, reseating this by pressing down. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the blue grease for the uh, eccentric, and then I'm going to take the transition piece or jack and, uh, and put that back. So this is the way we found that. And now we're going to turn our attention to uh, lubricating those drag washers in here. So these are the Model 60 drag washers, the Long Beach set. So if you had opened up a, a Pen Jigmaster, uh, this gearing is bigger. And um, now these drag washers, despite the age, are still flexible, so they can be reused. Uh, I'm going to go do that. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to take my steel wool again and I'm just going to, to grab some of the uh, tarnish off that bridge plate. 
Um, this is a nice bridge plate. Uh, there's the newer ones out there seem to be brass or some kind of composite, and they just don't uh, don't hold up uh, as these do. Uh, so again, check the main gear while I'm at it. Make sure all the teeth are, are in good condition. You can put a little bit of uh, glue grease on the, the gear as well. And underneath the gear there. And then we can reassemble. We want to make sure that the pinion is turning nice. Uh, pinion gear sleeve there. It is. There's a little bit of a, a noise there. And that's probably from lack of lubrication. So I'm going to take some Real X oil. And I'm going to put a little bit of that behind. And then we'll put a little bit on that... Uh, uh, shaft as well and that when they say the squeaky wheel gets the oil in this case that uh, squeak has gone away so there you go just as easy as that okay so back to the main gear and set that on the assembly we'll come out and for the drags because these haven't been serviced in a while I guess I could go ahead and replace them uh, as part of a real overhaul I would but these are flexible I'm going to go reuse them there's no reason not to and I'm going to use a universal dry grease on this and uh, the, the dry grease is manufactured by Cal's and if you'll notice I got it nice and lubricated on these and I'm working it in with that gloved hand again so even though the reel didn't have a lot of contaminants on it I'm using a grease here and I would prefer to uh, to keep that off my fingers so that's uh, the first of the, the, the washers now we're going to go over to the metal washer We'll come back and we'll do the second of the drag washers. Now these could be upgraded. They could be upgraded to a Carbonex uh, or an HD100 kind of a washer from Penn. Uh, again, it's the, the uh, Model 60 uh, washers. It's not the, uh, the Jigmaster washers because the gearing is a lower gearing. Okay, the eared washer, the one that has the two points, goes into the middle of the stack. And then we go up top here. And we do one more on that. We work that dry grease in over the top. And these will last uh, quite some time. Again, the, the fellow I bought it from, and it, it's nice to have the history, uh, said it wasn't used that much, uh, but it had been sitting around some time now. So that kind of gives you an indication of what you should prepare yourself for as you go to do the work here. Okay, now we'll, we'll go back and we'll set that anti-reverse dog and we'll finish this part of the reel up. We do so by pushing down on that spool gear, putting in the, the bridge assembly and turning the approximately 180 to the final completion. There's two types of screws on the bridge. There's a threaded screw and a partially threaded screw. The threaded screws belong on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and insert that screw. We're going to go ahead and take that uh, anti-reverse dog and slip it behind the, uh, the bridge plate so that it seats onto the, uh, the teeth in the back of the, uh, the, the pinion shaft. And then we're going to go ahead and take that flat spring, and this is the spring, and that wraps around the post. Uh, it goes on top of the dog and around the post. And seats like that so you have the it's sitting on top of this there's a post here wraps around the post and seats inside the, uh, the side plate there once that is complete you can complete the rotation of the bridge plate oh, I don't have it quite right there so let's go back the, uh, the dog just came loose there, so we want to just reset that. Go ahead and do that again. I guess when I went to, to show the camera how that uh, spring went, I allowed that to pop up. So, okay. Alright, now we're set and we can go do a partial seating of that first screw. And then I come back out and I kind of set the others in an X pattern to make sure that uh, 
that they're properly seated. Now the second uh, screws, the screws up top, have a uh, a partial thread on them. That's because the springs that you saw before uh, ride on that. So I'm just lining up the holes here. I'm using a small screwdriver to do that. And sometimes you just got to play with it a little bit before it uh, it lines up correctly. So we're going to go ahead and, and do the bottom one there, try and get that set. That's why I don't like to, uh, to, to put all of the screws in and tighten them down before I uh, finish setting them all. Uh, the, again, these are just the way that they've worked this sort of flexibility standpoint. Um, just makes it playable. And what we're doing here, you saw that yoke before. That yoke just didn't line up properly. But it's not done that uh, can't be aligned with uh, a small screwdriver or an awl or something you like to, to get that in. There we go. We just got it now. So be patient with it. Again, don't tighten them all down because you do need uh, literally wiggle room uh, to get these set up. And then once you get all four seated, which I do now, we'll just come back and tighten them all down and put them together. So this is a nice little reel. In short, don't go too deep. Don't use it for jigging. But if you're just bottom fishing, uh, lake, stream, uh, lake or uh, deep river or inshore ocean, uh, it's a nice setup. And uh, it's been around a long time. Like I said, for the most part, it's been obsoleted by the, the Jig Master. You can still buy a Jig Master. You can't buy a Surf Master. Um, it's not a real good casting reel, even though it's kind of suggesting that it is because it doesn't have the bearings uh, in it. But uh, it could be casted. And uh, like most pen reels, you know, this one probably was manufactured in the 60s. Uh, it's just as good today as it was then. Okay, so I put the ferrule back on, cleaned up the uh, star drag nut, put the star drag nut on that uh, shaft. I'm bringing that back over now to set it and turn. So one of the things I, uh, I like to tell folks is if you're not familiar with these reels, if, you, uh, if you're doing one for the first time, take pictures. Uh, use your cell phone uh, camera, use your digital camera. Uh, don't use a film camera. You're gonna have to wait for them to come back. But I advise you to take uh, take pictures so that if you lose your way, uh, don't remember quite the sequence or where pieces and parts came from. Uh, if you use your camera, uh, it's a quick guide. I also advise, as you saw over here, a small parts tray. Uh, it holds all the pieces and parts that uh, you take off the reel, so that when you go to put the reel back, uh, you know where to find them. And uh, I can tell you on more than one occasion, I've laid them out on my, my workbench here and uh, knocked them to the side and had difficulties. So I've kind of learned the hard way that it's, uh, it's easier to cut the bottom out of a milk jug or something and make a parts tray there um, and, it, and use it as, than to, uh, to go search for the pieces and parts. Well, this is, uh, this is quite a, a difference already. There, there's absolutely no... Uh, Chirping, there's no grind, it's not difficult at all. You can tell that the spool's spinning easily in, in cast mode. And uh, we've got a, a nice reel here for um, the price of uh, a, a tag sale and a little bit of knowledge. So, again, after this is over, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change out these, um, these side plates uh, to the Jigmaster side plates. And I'm going to look forward to putting this one uh, to use over the course of the next season. So if you have one of these, I hope this video has helped you uh, to understand the mechanics behind it and to uh, get a grasp of the procedures and how to go about uh, rebuilding the reel or servicing the reel. Um, if you need parts, if you happen to break a piece uh, or have a reel that's broken and needs a piece, the parts are still available on penparts.com. And as I mentioned, one of the features of this is that it uses parts from different reels. So again, the chassis or the frame happens to be a Jigmaster uh, chassis. 
The gearing inside happens to be a Long Beach. This came off the uh, Beach Master series, but if you wanted to upgrade the handle, you could go to a, uh, a Long Beach or a Jig Master handle. Uh, so the parts are still available. So if you find one of these that somebody might have uh, for sale because it needs some work, don't be afraid uh, to buy it for fear that you, uh, you can't get parts. You still can. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you like this, please indicate that on the, uh, on the screen. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel as I'm constantly uh, rebuilding the reels that, uh, that I purchase and uh, that my customers bring in. So you'll see a variety of spinning and conventional reels uh, done uh, because I want to share my experiences with you uh, through YouTube. Again, thanks for watching. This is Dennis with SecondChance.com.